uh, I think we'll start. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for the panel discussion hosted by Next Time on a topic that's very close to uh, my and the panel's heart, which is integrating technology for improving the supply chains. Uh, this session is supported by our close knowledge partners, the Port of Antwerp, the World Trade Center Pune, and the World Trade Center Venlo. Let me start by introducing myself. Uh, I am Satish Savant from Next Dime. I am the director for supply chain practice, and I overall head the operations excellence practice at Next Dime. 16 plus years of uh, supply chain experience uh, in the US and globally. Uh, educationally, a background in uh, industrial and systems engineering, MS, and MBA from India. I also have worked with strategy consulting companies like Accenture and AT Kani, uh, focusing on operational improvement. Glad to be here. A few uh, words about the host, which is Next Time. Next Time is an in employee owned, independent global business advisory organization. Uh, which has been supporting multinational companies at various business strategies and projects in the 1990s. We have helped businesses from over 50 countries across their functions to optimize their processes and churn out better efficiencies. In this regard, NextDime has been a recipient of multiple accolades. We are honored to have received the International Accounting Bulletins Award for the advisory project of their for two years, 2017 and 2019. NextDime provides multifunctional and digital capabilities across business consulting, business services, and professional services. We provide to both public and privately held firms with integrated solutions, navigating their complex operational challenges. We work with a vast array of business verticals, uh, industrial banking, private equity, telecom, telecom process, food processing, aviation, etc. So this uh, webinar is function uh, is uh, industry agnostic and it's focused towards supply chain vertical and the role of technology to improve efficiencies across the various people in this players in the supply chain uh, when next time at next time when we talk about supply chain um, we talk in terms of four verticals right uh, we have uh, the let me go to the next slide please yeah. So overall supply chain at the exam is four verticals. There's procurement. It starts from procurement and sourcing, manufacturing and uh, contract manufacturing. We have the distribution and network. Uh, and then we have the logistics and transportation. While these are the four big functions or verticals in supply chain, uh, there are uh, based on the timelines of the decisions you take or the analysis that you do, uh, the decisions could be strategic, tactical, and operational. We support organization across all these spectrums. So strategic would be any decision that affects uh, a five to 10 year horizon for an organization. Uh, tactical obviously is two to five years and operational is the day-to-day -day activities that need to happen to make the function supply chain run. Uh, so nowadays it's more important that the supply chains, it's not the businesses that compete against each other. It are the supply chains of the businesses that compete against each other. That's the saying that we, we adhere to. Among these four, uh, overarching these four verticals, we have the supply chain analytics, we have data management, obviously project management for any transformation that uh, companies are undertaking, and the transformation of the process, which will be process consulting and improvement of processes that we undertake. So with that, uh, our view of the supply chain, I would like to now take the opportunity to introduce our esteemed panelists. Uh, and they bring together, uh, we have the honor of having together a panel that is varied across by experience and geographies at the same time. So I'm looking forward to a very interesting discussion. Let me introduce our first panelist, uh, Sandeep Sharma. Sandeep is an experienced customer service logistics guy with a demonstrated history of working in the food and beverages industry. So he currently leads the supply chain and procurement at Domino's Pizza at Alamar Foods Company for the MENA region except for South Africa. Welcome, Sandeep. Our second panelist is David Leifson with over 20 years of experience as a supply chain management leader and consultant. David has worked very closely with several businesses across Europe. Welcome, David. Our third panelist is, and please pardon me, Erwin, if I uh, murdered your last name, Erwin Westralin. 
Irwin became a chief digital and innovation officer of the Port of Antwerp in 2017. His sad experiences showcase a strong background in strategic information technology thinking, in-depth transformation of the organization driven by IT. So strategy as well as implementation. He has the wholesome experience. Uh, Irwin was elected CIO of the year in 2018 and the European Digital Leader in 2020. So welcome, Irwin. Nice to be here. Uh, our fourth, thank you. Our fourth panelist is Anand MP. So Anand heads customer care for the CMA CGM groups liner division in India. He focuses on the group's global vision towards customer experience management. He has headed the group's e-business development initiative in the Middle East and the Indian subcontinent. Also manages the project management office to implement the QMS or the quality management system for CMA CGM India. Welcome, Anand. Thank you, Satish. Pleasure to be here. And last, but obviously not the least, I would like to introduce my co-moderator, uh, Neeraj Khinvasara. Neeraj founded and is currently leading the WTC World Trade Center Startup Incubator as a Chief Innovation Officer, where he works with multiple emerging technology startups and mentors entrepreneurs in their growth. Uh, in a global career of two decades, Neeraj has worked with leading organizations like AT&T, Shell, IBM, and Citigroup, and has founded the media tech company, MintPod TV. So welcome, Neeraj. So uh, to bring to warm up our panelists uh, for a good discussion, we are just I'm just going to set the context up very briefly. Uh, so we're going to talk about how technology is being used in supply chain. What is the rate of adoption and uh, how pandemic has affected that? A few case studies on which Nextdime has contributed uh, from a technology perspective to supply chains of companies. So uh, when we talk about supply chain, uh, there are four elements uh, that are broadly uh, in place. Okay. So supply, supply chain is primarily plan, source, make, deliver. That's the traditional view of supply chain. But with e-commerce developing, now return has become a bigger element, has plays a bigger element in the return segment as well. Uh, so you plan to make stuff, ship stuff, you source to make it, you actually make the product and you deliver using logistics and your network uh, for distribution. And you try to manage the return logistics and return transportation as well. And that return becomes a part of the quality management system for you as well. With that, uh, we are seeing in supply chain for planning, now we are getting and this has always been happening since the past 20, 25 years, since the advance of computers and computing is we have specialized planning softwares. We have tools for collaboration in terms of sourcing. We have online bidding, uh, order generation, and the contract lifecycle management. In terms of make, we have the IOT automated and intelligence machines, uh, automated uh, production monitoring, as well as the machine health monitoring that has become prevalent nowadays. In terms of deliver, we have advanced inventory management and auto processing systems. We have robotic pickup machines, which automate the process that we used to be done manually. And we have e-commerce, uh, which is has come up very quickly uh, as a way of delivering commerce. For returns, we have smart scanning devices that allow you to track, track the life cycle of the product throughout. We have the refund systems and our blockchain is now playing a uh, headway into this. Uh, now analytics, when we talk about analytics, so now we spoke about supply chain. Now let's talk about analytics. If you look from the bottom up, uh, there, is, there are six stages in an analytics process. First is the data aggregation. Then based on the data, you build reports, automate those reports, those reports become dashboards. Then you do an analysis of the data that becomes your uh, support to make take long-term decisions. To do predictive learning and machine learning to anticipate those learnings and react even before a human being has a chance to intervene. And obviously the last step is the pinnacle of uh, analytics support is optimization. You're constantly optimizing your supply chain to give you the uh, best cost quality service at the price that you're looking for. And it is in line with your strategic vision, company strategic vision. So if you look at it, the bottom two look look at data behind. So it's hindsight. In the middle two are more insights, like what can you derive from it? And the future are the four sides. What can I predict in advance that can save my company or money as well as some uh, service issues? 
so uh, if you look at it i mean there i will not read the entire slide but there are things that you can that happen in each step and there are methodologies that we practice in each of these steps that uh, lead to efficiency gains as we go along so how has technology adoption changed uh, in the past few years right why would you apply technology in the supply chain format why why aren't things they were working earlier why can't we just continue in the same way so you do it for three primary purposes right efficiency enhancement that gives you an edge in the market all three will give you an edge in the market but efficiency enhancement so collaboration increase having a single version of truth uh, we are even now surprised at how many different uh, the numbers revenue numbers change across departments in a company uh, decision support in analytics and obviously product process adherence uh, tracking it automatically that improves the efficiency and gives you an edge in the market cost savings obviously margin improvement uh, reduction of human error breakdowns uh, highlighting the problem areas uh, your dashboard or a reduction of the physical infrastructure remote working or contract manufacturing for that matter so uh, those are all cost saving uh, initiatives that can happen that can be enhanced via technology customer service i think this is the field where we are seeing the most impact of technology Uh, order management has become online and has become uh, very automated real time visibility is provided to customers uh, product availability has been checked uh, inventory tools have become much more uh, reactive and proactive for that matter and uh, the customer support the rpas the chatbots intelligence ai using ai to interact with your clients uh, that has become a key driver so these are the factors across this three elements uh, that are involving technology in each one of them now what how has the pan one last point i want to make on the pandemic point on how pandemic has affected us we are seeing a faster adoption of digital payments and digital uh, technology because of the pandemic all processes are becoming digital whether they be security whether they be online collaboration they are becoming much more digitized digitized uh, even in terms of e contracting and uh, uh, everything that we can go with contract management then the cost saving obviously the infrastructure management uh, the uh, operations automation cost reductions in cost savings and service uh, online services e-commerce transactions contactless operations has come up, has become very predominant because of uh, the covid pandemic that we have so uh, these are all coming up just a few examples of how we have helped an exam has helped companies in uh, their technology journey in supply chain so uh, we have worked across all six spectrums but i would just want to one highlight the ones that have delivered key values so for uh, like kpi tracking and visibility across countries and functions where the exercise of data aggregation reporting and dashboards was automated across asia pac then uh, secondary sales data for this uh, the volume was much higher a volume of data so uh, aggregation of that data and making the reports available faster to the senior management to react faster reducing the uh, time by almost 50% uh, is a big impact of this project that we did and the third one is a big uh, uh, non uh, i would say sub analytical but more compliance based for the british company that we worked on to track ethics uh, and compliance adherence across the globe so we created a solution that uh, would a dashboard that would track it globally and bring it bring up the key highlights very quickly to the senior management these are some of the things that we have worked in uh, technology at the intersection of technology and supply chain uh, we can keep on continuing to keep on working more uh, and uh, we have done that we have worked in the optimization range as well uh, while this is happening uh, we are seeing a lot of i mean there's hardly any projects that we see currently that are pure supply chain they always have uh, so a lot of elements of interactions with technology so nowadays we have a an analytics team that works very closely with us on more than half our projects uh, in improving the supply chain so with that i think that is setting up the context very nicely for our panelists to chime in uh, before i start my questioning uh, i want to have a few quick hygiene checks before we start uh, for this to keep uh, some discipline in the session we have uh, put the audience in listen only mode and uh, uh, so you can ask uh, uh, any questions please feel free to leave them in the question box and we will be happy to address them 
at the end of the panel discussion and uh, where neeraj will take on right so with that let me kick off the questions uh, i think the first question that i'm seeing is for ervin and uh, ervin what do you think the supply of future change operations supply chain operations look even technology look like i mean we know it's changing acceleration is increasing but can you like give some real life examples uh, that the antwerp port is developing or is in the process of developing and has de deployed that will have a positive impact on supply chain operations over to you arvin yeah sure thank you satish uh, good question um, now of course being a representative from a global port and the second port in europe we have a macro view on the entire uh, supply chain and also as a port we are an orchestrator in that global supply chain because all the stakeholders come in and out of the port so uh, in terms of uh, let's say innovative technologies or futuristic technologies uh, that we are deploying right now starting point for example is uh, leveraging machine learning capabilities to tap into vast uh, containers of data that we have in order to become much more predictive and prescriptive in uh, strategic elements of the supply chain running through the port. The second application of machine learning is also in the context of uh, smart uh, cameras or smart vision or computer vision, as we call it. It's applying machine learning capabilities to get relevant data out of uh, video feeds. And in that context, we could, for example, use that to track uh, trains and composition of trains, track containers as they flow through the port, etc. Once we have that capability and we're deploying that, the next thing is to hook that up to a drone because a drone is a flying platform on which we can hook um, uh, smart cameras, for example, to detect things like oil spills. Also, sensors are being deployed and all of these elements together. So uh, tracking data, machine learning, um, drones, uh, sensors, they compose what we call the digital nervous system on top of the physical port. And in the end, I see that as a stepping uh, stone into a merger of the digital and the physical world, which will again allow us to have a positive impact on a global supply chain. Uh, also, what we are doing in terms of uh, technology is we're uh, very much promoting the implementation of uh, remote controlled barges uh, for Antwerp. 38% of the in and outgoing cargo is via barges. And if we want to boost that above 40%, we have to go into that direction of remote control barges, which are currently already operational. We uh, allowed startups to prove that technology was mature. We went to the legislator and the legislator allowed it to happen. And then finally, as part of the global supply chain or the supply chain in and around the port, a Ford mode of transport, which is often forgotten, which are pipelines, um, will be become much more intelligent as we move into open access backbones for uh, CO2, hydrogen and uh, heat exchange. And then finally, in order to facilitate all of that, we are looking into the implementation of 5G as a uh, mobile data carrier for all of these sensors, cameras and so on. So I think that that also demonstrates how ports are an innovation hub for all these new promising technologies to take root and have a positive impact on the supply chain. Back to you, Satish. Uh, thank you, Irvin. Actually, the one concept that has been taken on by multiple companies and that has been uh, copied by, uh, copied from the airports and the ports is the operational cockpit, where you have a nerve center with all the feed coming into the one area uh, and decision-making is centralized and automated, can be automated because of the centralization. Uh, that's an interesting concept that has come because of ports uh, and airports. That's uh, very applicable to FMCG and other companies as well. So, yes. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, the second question I think is more for Anand. Uh, so, Anand, uh, how do you think the COVID nineteen has impacted global shipping and logistics industry? And uh, because of this, what are the new challenges besides the challenges that the industry has always faced? What are the new challenges that the industry has needs to deal with? And how, what are the steps that have been taken? Okay, uh, Satish, uh, well, the COVID-19 crisis is certainly affecting all sectors of the global economy with varying consequences. So uh, as far as CMA, CGM is concerned, uh, I think uh, our priority is always first to ensure the safety and health of uh, all the employees and uh, at the same time provide our customers with the best possible solutions. So 
uh, I, I can confidently say that we are fully mobilized and uh, sufficiently agile to manage this uh, exceptional situation. Um, as far as our shipping activity is concerned, uh, I must say that there is a significant increase in uh, volumes transported compared to the previous quarters of uh, 2020 or the last quarter of 2019. Um, the crisis has also demonstrated the uh, solidity of our business model and uh, the relevance of our strategy, uh, which is basically to combine uh, logistic solutions along with our core transport offering, that's uh, ocean uh, uh, transportation. Um, in the second semester, particularly the volumes uh, overall globally, the uh, volumes transported via ocean have increased uh, drastically, uh, which I must say is putting uh, the whole supply chain uh, under a bit of a pressure. But uh, uh, CMS CGM uh, as a group uh, has taken numerous actions to increase uh, capacity and uh, meet customer requirements during this specific periods. So uh, if I would uh, have to take some specific examples, perhaps uh, I can say a very agile uh, demand, demand supply uh, optimization so that there are no huge gaps in between uh, sailing schedules or perhaps even adding uh, to the fleet of our existing containers so as to meet up the increasing demand that is prevalent, especially in the Asia to Europe and Asia US trade lanes and also finding uh, constantly finding innovative solutions uh, to avoid congested ports, finding new routes, uh, etc. So uh, it, it is a continuous process and, uh, and uh, I think uh, it will definitely evolve over a period of time as well going forward. Over to you, Satish. Thank you, Anand, for that insightful uh, take. Uh, so uh, I think the next question, I think we can move on uh, to Sandeep. And Sandeep is more uh, close to the customer than the other uh, verticals that we're talking about. So Sandeep, can you please share your views on how uh, franchise and uh, food delivery has overcome the hurdles in maintaining supply chain of and logistics of essential products because of such a I mean unprecedented time of COVID-19, right? I mean, what are some strategic decisions or strategies that have been employed to provide these products to end consumers? Uh, uh, distribution last mile, mile, obviously, but in terms of hygiene and uh, customer centricity that you're doing. Thank you, Satish. Uh, so, uh, Satish, when we talk of this point, the first thing in terms of the food, food delivery, food quality or anything that comes up to us is the food safety at this point of time. And food safety has been a very critical thing and has been a very, you know, talked about thing in the entire world. But now, it is getting more and more importance and which is which is a great thing actually that you feel safe of eating anything of any food which is like you know which is either delivered to you or you are eating in the restaurant or it's a takeaway whatever it is okay so actually in covid 19 when you go through it you we understand i would rather you know just put up the facts based on the middle east north africa markets because i'm, I'm based out of uh, uae uh, we are the countries which don't have very high localized production. So if you see India, India is quite good into a localized production because of the uh, availability of the raw materials and all. Okay, in our part of the world where we have the core things which is compliance in terms of the quality and uh, uh, food safety and all these things, they are taken from specific suppliers across the globe and to maintain the consistency, we make sure that everybody across all markets are taking from somebody who is compliant. Okay. So in this case, what happens when this COVID stuck? It actually stuck really fast and nobody was expecting it. So the one thing that happens into these countries are we do a lot of cross-border logistics. And this cross-border logistics happens through road. Because it is really in, in terms of GCC uh, going through one country to another. Uh, by road is actually, you know, actually going from Delhi into any other city in India. So it, it's that. But then what happened during the COVID, there was a panic, there were the border closures. So what we actually thought of and what we started doing us, we actually gathered the entire team because that was one of the key things to make sure the communications are proper. We take proper action and the execution is proper to make sure that there's no hindrance in terms of uh, the operations, hindrance in terms of the sales and then to the ultimate customer. So basically it was like to understand what is the market condition because I take care of 10 markets and 
every market was into a different condition at all then understanding the legalities because at that time lot of new legal systems came into the countries which could have hindered into supply chain or they were actually for good for the people but then if you really don't understand them and don't take care of them can be a problem okay the second thing which we really got into it we used to do it but we never used to do it in so details was to understand where our when where the exactly the places where our vendors are situated and where they are getting the raw materials from so well, they may also be getting the raw materials from the countries which is affected by covid and the factory closures and all these kind of things uh, we looked at our market inventories how they are doing it and one thing that i want to uh, you know share in this is what a very significant kind of uh, inventory i'll say uh, uh, dissipation i should say is the right word that happened because of a sudden increase in the sales especially for the companies who are into delivery and if you talk of dominos dominos has never been a pizza company it's a technology company i always say that okay and they have been by default good on technology to make sure that the customer you know understand how to order it the 70% of the orders come digitally to you you have a app you have a tracking system in place uh, you 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 know make sure and you this is one of the thing 30 minutes of free so it requires lot of technology behind and one thing that we took at that point of time was to make sure that the people inside the outlet are safe our customer are safe the food is delivered in a very safe environment it's a touchless delivery okay now coming back to the supply chain the basic strategy we tried was getting was closer to the vendor because if you ask me i always say 70% 80% of the things in supply chain gets into a wrong mode because of communication and definitely technology has helped us to get the communication better and get the get the data better to analyze and to take a you know better decision so that was one point of time where we made sure that every country has got a specific inventory uh they are replenishing the inventory they are taking care of any kind of uh, you know uh sudden trend changes in the sales because there was a lot of trend changes that have happened i've i've seen markets going up by like 120% in a month which is which can be really crazy in terms of inventory okay but we had a good part since we have 11 markets with us it's easily to reshuffle the stock and that was that comes with a bit of a higher pricing but that but at least it doesn't get you into a stock out and you know disruption in terms of the operations and the sales that was one part of it second thing was we made sure our food goes through the entire process to make sure it is checked at every stage in terms of food safety in terms of any violence in the temperature in terms of everything and every pizza that goes out of the outlet is actually checked in terms of the temperature in terms of the quality and everything this was a special thing that came in and i think so that that actually led us through this entire tough time thank you the takeaways that i uh, hear from you are understand your vendor's vendor not just your vendor but you have to understand the vendor before him to ensure that supply chain is smooth and um, so my side i think uh, sandeep uh, what i have realized is because of this pandemic uh, supply chain has become uh, the importance of supply chain has become more prevalent and now people are starting to realize uh, the efficiency or the cost that they are enjoying uh, for a particular product is not just because of the marketing one but it's because of the efficiency of the supply chain uh, that leads to the reduction in cost as well so I Thank agree you. to you. I agree to you, Satish. One main thing that came into it because of this sudden surge, lot of companies come came under the pressure of working capital. And if your supply chain is not designed that way, you will have a problem. Thank you. Thank you, Sandeep. Uh, David, I think the next question is coming for you as a consultant. So, how do you see the logistics function getting impacted by the digital transformation? I mean, uh, how digital logistics platforms? can they really help streamline operations and reduce cost yeah thank you satish and and uh, i'm happy to be here um uh, what i can see from from uh, my consulting side and being here in, in uh, sweden is that more and more people are are uh, working from home and that will uh, uh, that has given companies or or 
they have less uh, visibility and transparency of the logistics function um, since people are isolated at home and they they have not the capacity of asking as easily or fast uh, more senior pro uh, people that that could help them solve problems so that could lead to that uh, companies are more careful and there is a potential error in, in logistics as well as in other other department in the, in the company and what i can see is is uh, companies now are looking more and more into digitalization of, of logistics and uh, the the covid 19 has actually speeded up uh, the process by a couple of years instead of, of waiting two or three years uh, companies are looking into implementing something within two or three months and uh, what what the digital transformation uh, brings is the real transparency and visibility to the table uh, also uh, many many of the digital platforms out there uh, they, are, they are giving people the chance of working from home but having the feeling that they're in the office so they have a, a bigger visibility and, and uh, a much um, much better way of working and regarding the, the how, how the digital platforms can uh, streamline operation and reduce cost uh, they, they are bringing most of them are bringing efficiency uh, of doing your work faster easier and reducing the manual work uh, because even if in the office we, we are seeing that we are doing a lot of manual work, for example, in, in purchasing, uh, we, we, are, uh, we are doing manual or uh, like, you know, making the order confirmation and, and so on. And um, what, what a digital platform like um, in my experience can do is, is reduce those manual works and automate it and uh, let the employee really focus on, on, on the uh, problems that are uh, coming up instead of, of those uh, routine works. So in that sense, um, those digital platforms are, are maybe not direct cost reducing, but what they are, they are, they are uh, helping the company doing more with the same amount of people. And, and an example, if a, if a purchasing order is costing maybe 60 euro per order to handle, it could be with the use of a proper digital uh, logistics platform and be down to um, 40, 45 euros. So, so it means that uh, you, you're doing more with the same amount of people and, and uh, it will make your uh, operation more streamlined. Uh, that is what, what I'm seeing. Thank you. I think, uh, I think we are seeing the same. And uh, we are seeing an uptick in the MA activity in like digital platforms and supply chain platforms, uh, specifically from an Indian uh, perspective. We are seeing that a lot. Thank you. Thank you, David. So I think the next question uh, is uh, from Anand again, for Anand again. So, uh, as a B2B customer, I mean, a client and a provider, and what changes are you seeing for customer requirements and expectations because of COVID? I mean, how has shipping and logistics? change to meet this customer needs and in facilitating that change what role do you see technology playing uh, yeah satish well uh, covid or not the uh, expectations from the customers are very simple i mean first and foremost uh, it's to be able to provide uninterrupted services uh, so that there are no disruptions in the supply chain um, adding to that something that has uh, some two important aspects uh, that have been added greatly because of the current situation that we are in is visibility and uh, transparency. Also, there is a very big need for customers to be able to connect and transact virtually because of the various restrictions that are in place in uh, many locations across the globe. Uh, maybe customers can't come to our office uh, to collect documents or to exchange documents or uh, there are no uh, there are no transportation facilities available where they could go to the port or the customs to complete certain formalities so it's not only cma cgm but it's a host of stakeholders across the supply chain whether it is the customs the port etc who are increasingly leaning towards offering a lot of virtual or digital solutions so that customers can first and foremost 
have a platform where they can transact seamlessly uh, without much disruptions. Uh, specifically, I would like to mention that one of the biggest success factors for us uh, was the ability to be able to cater to this important requirement uh, throughout this period uh, through our e-business platform, which was already up and running and which definitely had a very high adoption rate, especially in India. I can say for India because I operate out of here. And uh, this has helped us greatly to ensure continuity uh, in the business and also for eliminating any sort of uh, uh, manual processes or paper exchange, etc. So uh, in terms of the e-technology uh, or e-business solutions uh, that we are talking about, uh, it's just not limited to one or two features. I mean, uh, literally today, if you see uh, for a customer to find a schedule, to find the vessels that he wants, the routes, the price, even to place his booking requests, or even to print a bill of lading, which is the end product of the documentation cycle, whether he needs to upload and submit certain documents or certificates, everything is possible virtually today. And uh, I think uh, this is the basic minimum expectation. It is not an add-on. And uh, uh, as an industry, I guess we have greatly uh, lived up to the expectations uh, in terms of providing such platforms to our customers. Uh, apart from this, uh, as CMA CGM, we have been also catering to the growing requirements from the customers to complement the our core solutions, which can add benefit uh, in supporting and supply, simplifying our customer supply chain. Uh, we have a host of solutions being provided under our, our CMA CGM plus banner, whether it is to ensure some priority connections for fast shipments, uh, whether it is to provide visibility solutions, or whether it is to support in their environmental endeavors. Uh, all these are possible today. And uh, there is a very uh, easy way of customers to view and select such options uh, electronically as well. So uh, as I just to conclude my point, uh, Satish, uh, the requirements do not change, uh, whether it is the pandemic time or not. It's just that uh, the requirement from our side to speed up and adapt to the changing requirements have to improve. So thank you. Over to you, Satish. Yes, Anand, I think not just for shipping, I think the pandemic has acted as a catalyst for multiple industries and uh, in change completely, somehow completely transforming the business that you do. And uh, it will be a very interesting time post pandemic, uh, how, how this now the increased efficiency or flow, how that will impact our day-to-day -day lives and the uh, jobs uh, employment scenario. I mean, how will that change in the future? That's going to be very interesting to see. Thank you, Anand. Absolutely. Uh, I think the next question is for uh, Irvin. I mean, uh, so Irvin, uh, can you share information on how the port of Antwerp or for uh, that matter, the industry is striving to streamline international trade while ensuring cost and time effectiveness? Uh, security reliability. This is the standard things that any port would do, but by bringing the value chain players together on a common platform. So uh, what have you in your personal experience seen if you bring this player on a platform, what are the benefits that you see? And if you can quote some examples, that'd be great. Arvind. Yeah, sure, Satish. Um, well, the starting point for our initiatives are of course the observation that we all see and that we all make at the fragmented supply chain. Uh, in many ways, you could ask yourself the question, is there a supply chain or, we, or are we just looking at a set of uh, individual chattels that have optimized themselves, but when they pass on the stick to the next one in the chain, there is actually just a black hole. Now, of course, there lies, there lies the opportunity. I think the time has come. Um, I think for some time now, the industry is starting to understand that in terms to in, in going to the next level of operational efficiency, there has to be much more transparency in the chain where all the stakeholders are optimally informed of things that are going on so that they can adapt accordingly if something doesn't go as expected. So, and we've seen that. And again, as our role as a port authority and community builder for the port ecosystem, we have been instrumental in setting up a data sharing platform. And when I say that, I mean 
the data sharing is the means to an end. And the end is, first of all, to create much uh, more transparency in the supply chain uh, in the port, in and around the port, I have to say. And from there on, it's a catalyst towards uh, operational efficiency and an enabler towards innovation. Uh, what, is, what is fairly unique or let's say um, interesting about the data sharing platform, it's an open uh, innovation platform. It's an ecosystem where we provide relevant data sets or invite stakeholders to put relevant data sets on the platform. But we have acknowledged from day one, the big elephant in the room, namely a lack of trust. Now, the big issue I think this entire industry has been struggling with is do we trust one another enough to share information? So the data governance is very strongly elaborated on the platform, allowing you as the owner of the data, the, uh, as the owner of the data always to decide who has access to what. Now, what we've seen since 2017 is that gradually more and more of the cargo groups uh, are coming on board. Uh, and for the moment we are very uh, much in preparation of what we call certified pickup, which is going to digitize the uh, process flow of every import container going through the port. And amongst others, it will provide a dashboard where we provide the green lights so every important status of a container as it passes through, like the commercial release, the customs release, the terminal release, so that all the stakeholders who have to prepare themselves for picking up a container either via barge, train or truck is informed on time and if there's some kind of a hiccup that they can uh, react accordingly. So that's just an example, but also a couple of months ago, the break bulk industry, the break bulk sector focusing on steel has come on the platform with a dedicated application. And we're now also rolling out uh, a next one for in and outgoing tankers, which is also an enormous uh, process optimization that can take place, reducing the merge cost for cargo owners. So these are just a few examples. Further down the pipeline, uh, we have uh, strategic intentions to work very closely with uh, customs and to help them in their digitization efforts, because I think that it's an open door that being able to digitize interactions with customs would also improve a lot. So these are a few examples, Satish, of how we are helping the uh, improvement of uh, transparency and thereby driving operational efficiency in and around the port. Back to you. Thank you, Irvin. I think uh, collaboration and uh, security have always been at loggerheads with each other. So uh, it, it's uh, like you said, it's a matter of trust. And uh, the more the trust improves, the better the collaboration becomes. So thank you, Irvin. Uh, next is for David. Uh, I think uh, we should ask him uh, based on his experience if he has a high level case study on how technology is being used in supply chain and how is it benefiting to that business? David? Yeah, uh, what, what I'm seeing uh, from uh, uh, my perspective in, in uh, consulting and uh, being within a couple of companies is uh, there's a lot of data out there. Uh, and the, the problem is, is uh, it's all over the place. It's in an ERP system, it's in a warehouse management system and transportation management system. Uh, so, so the big need is to consolidate all this data to, to have it uh, as a decision um, or to, to make decision from the data. And what I'm seeing and, and been working on are, are uh, analytic tools, uh, especially one that I was thinking about. It's uh, from a company called LogHub in, in Switzerland. And this, this analytic tools is, is um, it's, uh, combining uh, data from all these sources and uh, taking it into uh, AI uh, calculation and, and it could be demand forecasting, it can be uh, network design, uh, center of gravity or, or, or something like that. And, and it will, uh, what, what, uh, what it is happening is, is they are, they are up, uh, like, you know, taking all this data and, and putting it into a, a more, uh, optimized or automated workflow so it will uh, bring a, a visibility uh, to the to the management team uh, so they can react on on uh, what's happening and even to the the team that is uh, in, in the operation so you could have 
for example, uh, identification of, of uh, root problem issues if there are some problems in, in uh, if it's a transportation company or inventory monitoring in, in real time to, to see if, if one store, uh, for example, if you have a couple of stores in, in, uh, in a country and, and one store is running out and, and if you can uh, react to that more quickly than you could before. So what, what I'm seeing is that uh, uh, it, is, it is going more toward the uh, use of, of uh, data, consolidating data and, and using uh, uh, analytics platforms to really understand how companies can uh, can uh, make quicker decision, which is uh, really important, especially now in, in uh, COVID-19, when, when things are changing day from day. So that, that's uh, one, one thing that, that uh, kind of a, a case that I'm seeing. So uh, I hope that have given you some, some answers. Yeah, absolutely, David. I mean, uh, even in our experience with next time, what we see is, uh, like you said, data aggregation, just looking at the total data uh, and putting it on a chart, as simple as that. I mean, a very elementary exercise that reveals to you very high gains in efficiency and suggests improvement opportunities very quickly. So within like 10 to 15 days, you can see a change shift happening because you're projecting the data in a particular way. It's just a matter of getting it all together. So thank you, David, we understand yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, so now this question uh, comes more towards the end customer person who's in touch with the end customer, Sandeep. So because of this COVID and normally as well, I mean, food and beverages is, is that kind of an industry. There are wild fluctuations in supply chain, right? In, in terms of demand. So planning your supply chain is a challenge always, even more so in COVID scenarios. Uh, what are organizations doing and how should they deal with this challenge? Sandeep, I think you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Satish. So we, we went through, so supply chain always has got a fluctuations in our business because our business is of food. And it's very difficult to understand the sales mix. You can see the trends on the sales mix for sure. But it's very difficult to understand because sales mix is linked to seasonality. It's linked to festivals. It's linked to the holidays linked to a lot of things okay so itself it actually becomes very complicated okay you can check the trends but if you really ask me COVID has finished up all trends there's no trends absolutely now okay so you have to build up the trends again because if you see last three years trend and this trend you it's difficult to make a decision i uh, we we tried a model on ai and it made a wrong decision because the trends were wrong so so it takes the data from there. So it becomes very difficult because even the technology is not helping you. So at that point of time, you are into a very high unpredictability zone. And I always say in supply chain, which has been very true, the more high the variability of the supply chain, if your supply chain is not innovative, it is not, it is not the velocity of the supply chain is really high and you can make a faster decision because of the lean supply chain, there is going to be a big problem. Okay. And the problem in supply chain, when you talk of supply chain, one decision actually affects the other. One or wrong decision on the entire chain that doesn't involve you. It may involve your supplier or supplied supplier or the operations or whomsoever that will affect it. For the first time, I have been reading about this bullwhip effect. I think so for last 20 years, but I've seen bullwhip effect first time in my life. That this, this bullwhip effect can happen. And that bullwhip effect was a crazy effect. And that actually happened, not, not on us, it happened on groceries. It happened on other things, but then if you have a common vendor, you are into a big problem. So talking of, so, you know, fluctuation. So fluctuations in this entire thing has been high. Again, I'm coming back to the communication. Again, I'm coming back to the technology and the data transfer or the data alignment that happened between you and your supplier. So we made sure of one thing. Uh, we are on a ERP and we we have some vendors, which is core vendors, who have the system where our ERP can talk. They can understand our level of uh, not only inventory, of usage on everyday basis. 
so we really went on more of a a uh, mode where it is more of a replenishment mode than anything else so they were really producing by forecast not by the purchase order but then this data transfer and this technology has to be so strong at that time that it's very that it's easier to take a faster and a better decision on so this is one thing that you know it has shown second thing is definitely technology in food business or any business technology is going to revolutionize the things and it is it has been doing and it will do but then what technology is good for which company that is something which everybody has to be very careful while selecting it we 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 used to talk of sap okay is sap good for everyone um, i don't know really is good is sap good for small businesses you know because it comes with every technology comes with their own complications do you have a resource to take care of that complications can you hire the resources okay because i always say we are into a business of pennies and the business of pennies has to be taken care of in the same way so you know there has been a high demand fluctuation there has been a supply chain gaps there has been a uh, high high volatility on supply chain with a high unpredictability and at this point of time the only thing which saved us during the last few months and we we had a good lesson out of it is basically communication through a technology right data and to take a right decision at right time thank you absolutely sandeep so i mean there are some supply chain design things that you can do like centralized demand uh localized distribution uh maybe better i mean modeling is gone because like you said the data in the model is old uh, with the new it doesn't play along well with the new trends but yes there are some fundamental supply chain things that you can do to manage some fluctuations but obviously not at the scale as what we saw in covid scenario yeah thank you thank you sandeep um so anand now i think uh, we want to ask you a more futuristic future looking question and uh, i think uh, we saw that we are only using uh, digitization and maybe uh, some other things new technologies but what do you see as a role for iot and cloud and other tech, any emerging technologies that you want to comment on uh, for the future of shipping and logistics industries okay i i i would not want to limit to iot and cloud but uh, since you have mentioned iot i can give you a very good example uh, uh, there is a smart container solution available called traxens which basically uh, gives end to end visibility to a customer not only for the ocean transport but from door to door along with a lot of analytics reports uh heat variation door opening shocks etc so a small this is the power that a small chip uh, fit in a container can give to the customer today uh the problem is not the technology in itself satish it is the matter of interoperability because today we have various initiatives and various players uh developing multiple platforms all are good but what is most important for from a customer's perspective is to have a seamlessness of data flowing across platforms so that he gets the required visibility on his entire supply chain to make informed decisions so as uh, as uh, my uh, fellow panelist urban was rightly mentioning there is a large element of trust involved in players being able to share data amongst one another Uh, which today at least uh, i mean there is a positive note that we have come a long way in uh, shedding out such apprehensions and uh, in collaborating with one another at least to try and find some common solutions and standards so uh, at least uh, in container shipping under the aegis of dcsa which is the digital container shipping association it's an association formed by some of the world's largest container shipping operators there's been a lot of progress in developing common standards for uh, for uh, multiple uh, message uh, multiple shipping related messages like tracking moves or bill of ladings or shipping booking instructions etc uh, which is actually a big bre- breakthrough because until today we did not have such common standards uh, where messages could flow across from one platform to other uh, today when we are providing more uh, emphasis on developing port community systems when we are emphasizing that uh, uh, 
a lot of stakeholders, not just the carriers and the customers, but even uh, land side transport operators, terminals and ports, customs, et cetera, should come into one uh, platform. Uh, definitely such interoperability is very important. Uh, there is on the other side, there are some initiatives which are also ongoing, which may be not that uh, much publicized uh, in the, uh, uh, in, 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 amongst the uh, media or the customer network. That is a lot of initiatives centered around uh, robotic process automation and machine learning which is basically helping us at the back end to improve uh, the operational efficiency so that we can minimize turnarounds, we can improve the quality of our service delivery to the customers. So at least as CMSCGM, I can uh, proudly say that uh, we are amongst the uh, industry leaders and first movers in terms of adoption of such technologies. And uh, as we speak, uh, the CMSCGM group today is committed to two main initiatives. Uh, uh, which are basically uh, blockchain enabled platforms, uh, especially uh, being developed uh, with the objective that I mentioned before to ensure seamless, to bring in all uh, stakeholders into one platform and to ensure seamless uh, uh, flow of information. Uh, one of that is Tradelens and uh, the other is uh, GSBN. Uh, both are under various stages of development. Tradelens uh, for at least people who are regularly following social media uh, and uh, and the updates with uh, regards to the technology development in the shipping and logistics front would be very well aware about trade lanes and uh, the benefits that it will bring uh, to the shipping community today. So uh, overall, Satish, just to sum up, it, it's not one or two particular technologies that would, uh, that would play uh, a significant uh, game in improving the adoption of digitalization in the industry but it would be a host of all these technologies. Uh, but what is most important is that all these uh, initiatives and platforms can be able to talk to each other and uh, can communicate amongst one another so that uh, it ultimately helps the end customer to get the required benefit in terms of information flow and visibility of his supply chain. Thank you. Hey. Thank you, Anand. Uh, and now I'm going to spin the same question, a similar question to uh, David. So, uh, David, I mean, uh, what is your view on uh, like sensor-based IoT technologies and how they are beneficial to supply chains of an organization? I mean, we saw it from CMA's perspective, uh, from a consulting and from a end-user perspective. What do you see? Yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you for that question. It's a very interesting question, and uh, uh, it's a buzzword, the IoT uh, in, in today, uh, and then sensor-based. Uh, it is what I can see. I mean, this technology will, will bring, as uh, Anand said, uh, visibility, and you will have a greater uh, control of your supply chain, and then the flexibility uh, will increase. But what I'm seeing is uh, that there is a lot of platforms out there, a lot of technology, uh, and uh, it is difficult to do, like, you know, have uh, a few ones that are doing everything. So what, what I can see is, is um, companies would, would probably uh, choose the ones that would suit them the best. Uh, th there are so many niche uh, technologies focusing on transportation, warehousing, or, or or some other uh, oil and gas and, and, and stuff like that. So they, they would just choose uh, what they really want. And, and what I'm seeing is that uh, the, the era of the ERP system uh, having to control everything is, is going out the window and you're getting this uh, IoT technology uh, that you could plug and play into your ERP system and use really uh, the technology that you, you, that you need. And, and also in, in the terms of, of uh, system talking to each other, I think uh, it is more of a way of, of a, a Facebook way where we, we are all connected into and then we can choose the kind of uh, technology or a platform that we, we really want to use. So, uh, so, so there is, because there is a difficult of integrating uh, every technology, every, every platform with, with different ERP system and so on. And uh, there is a lot of, of uh, 
really good technology out there. Uh, and and uh, what we can see, it has been speeded up real fast with the pandemic. Uh, and uh, so, so that's really great news. Uh, so so uh, with, with that said, it's, um, I think this pandemic has, has uh, taught us that we really need to look into new ways of, of working and uh, IoT or, or sensor-based technologies can really help us in, in uh, being better and, and uh, have an easier way of working. So that's a little bit of my view. Thank you. Yes, David, I think uh, your view that the solution will have to be customized is absolutely right because we help clients build business cases for adoption of technology and uh, the ones, one size fits all doesn't work. I mean, it has to be customized to that industry, to that context like the track sense, uh, which Anand spoke about, uh, it is more uh, being adopted better in more refrigerated and freeze frozen transportation than in the normal uh, commodity type transportation. So the adoption is involved uh, basis the uh, need for that plan. So yes, absolutely right in that sense. Uh, Sandeep, do you have a comment here? Yeah. Uh... I just wanted to say the same thing, which, uh, you know, just now we have been uh, talking about is basically a specific solution for the specific industry, maybe a specific company also, because everything today, what happens when we actually try to procure something in terms of technology, the return on investment comes into picture. What is the return on investment on this? How far we can go? Is it doable, not doable? Do, do our resources has capability to take care of? Okay. And when you are into a multiple country operations, it becomes very, you know, imperative and very important to make sure it is a sustainable solution in every country, because every country is different. So definitely, if you have a very specified solution given to you, that is always better in terms of the execution in terms of the results rather than having a common kind of software and start using it. Absolutely, uh, absolutely, Sandeep. And uh, I mean, uh, scale also helps. I mean, if you have the requisite scale for implementation, along with the talent, obviously talent and business need, uh, what we generally see is implementing a technology solution for our uh, global clients or US clients, where there's a sufficient scale of operations uh, is fair, not easier, but the business case proves itself faster than say the APAC area where you have 20 to 27 countries and uh, with the diverse portfolios and trying to build a business case for a particular technology becomes increasingly difficult. But uh, the point is well taken that uh, along with the dedicated mention, scale is also important uh, for the uh, uh, proving a technology. I think we have time for one last question and I think I would like to direct it uh, towards Arvind. Uh, Arvind, uh, what areas of distribution logistics will you see a rapid adoption of technology? I think you mentioned some areas in which uh, the port of Antwerp is trying to implement technology, but from a distribution and logistics perspective, which areas do you see will change the fastest? Why? Yeah. Well, building further on what I already said, um, I think we should now take a step forward uh, across the board, uh, uh, joining forces, because if we want to go to the, the next, if we want to tackle the challenges ahead of us or where we're already in, uh, collaboration will be key. Uh, and, and thinking about the challenges, um, it's about uh, operational efficiency, it's about sustainability, it's about compliance, and it's about climate change. And as an industry, as a global supply chain, if we want to find the opportunity behind the challenge, if we really want to make an impact, we will have to collaborate. And the good news, and I really would like to build on what was already said by uh, the panelists from CMR CGMA, is that I really strongly support initiatives like DCSA, huh? uh, where the sh container shipping lines take their responsibilities as very big players to join forces and to propose standards where they also leverage what is already existing. So they do not reinvent the wheel, but they build on standards from UNCFAC, for example, and complement where needed. So, and it also, is an expression of the willingness to go for an open ecosystem, not the winner takes it all, because even the biggest players, they acknowledge that you can't 
do it on your own anymore if you really want to make an impact. So that is really good news. And at the level of the ports, the, the same evolution is taking place where we are also instrumental or trying to be instrumental in bringing together uh, uh, ports from around the world to start sharing data that is sitting in their port community systems, which are gold mines of relevant data. So we are a partner in the uh, International Port Community System Association Initiative to create what is called a network of trusted networks. So again, we're not after the creation of a super network, a one big network that absorbs everything, but about connecting using standards, of course, uh, to connect all these platforms, to connect all these initiatives and create that transparency and visibility, which will have an impact on efficiency, on sustainability, on compliance and so on. So the building blocks are there. I see the train is leaving the station. I feel the commitment to take a step forward. And as David rightfully said, COVID in that respect has been one hell of an opportunity to point to the opportunity, the need, and also what digitization can mean in a short term in a really tangible impact. Satish, back to you. Thank you, Irvin. I think that's a, a perfect uh, way uh, in which to summarize the overall discussion in terms of collaboration and having standards in place for the technology to take it next step forward. So I, I would like to continue having this discussion, uh, but I, I'm afraid we are uh, at the end of the time. Uh, so uh, let me hand it over. Uh, I will stop the panel discussion as of now, but uh, let me hand it over to Neeraj uh, who will take over the, uh, the audience questions, if any, and then uh, we'll uh, do the closing remarks. So Neeraj, over to you. Uh, thank you, Satish. Uh, we do have a question from the audience. We have a couple of questions from the audience. Um, if there are more, please type them here. Uh, one comes from Sumit is, and I think this one's for Anand. What is the scope of uh, intra-logistics and warehousing facilities in Africa? And then he goes on to say, we are very keen to explore the African continent, working very closely with them. Well, the scope is huge because uh, Africa today is a growing market and uh, from an infrastructural perspective, there's a lot of attention that is required and there are a lot of players who are actually keenly investing in various projects in Africa and there is a lot that's been done in terms of port development, in terms of warehousing development, in terms of other landside infrastructural development. So the opportunity is big, but again, Africa is a big continent and uh, 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 I would definitely, uh, uh, Sumit, I can connect with you separately to understand your requirement a little more closely so that I can be more specific in my answer to you. Because again, the dynamics in the West Coast of Africa is completely different to the South, East and North. So it's quite difficult for me to give a, uh, give a single answer to that question. So I, I can drop in my email ID uh, here and uh, definitely you can uh, let me know what are the specific uh, areas that I can assist you with. Thank you, Anand. Okay, the next one uh, says, what role do you see technology will play in increasing agility and resilience of supply chain to withstand, withstand such disruption for end user? Uh, Sandeep, you wanna take that? So definitely, uh, just to repeat my answer, we all talk of two things, real-time information, correct data, and, re and communication and a clear communication, which is a mix of a technology and human. Okay, so technology gives you something, you actually give it in terms of the data and it actually analyzes it and give it back to you. So if these things are combined in a right way, and if it is taken in terms of the kind of organization and the way of that organization and the kind of business you do, I think so technology is extremely important and extremely useful. So again, I'm saying one thing, don't make technology to be your master. Technology is supposed to be a servant. Use it like that. If technology becomes your master, there is a problem. Thank you. Okay, the next one is, um, and I, I don't think we touched on this uh, a lot, but I think this is a good question. Can someone co comment on cloud usage, hybrid clouds? Are multi-cloud providers being used today in your organization's environment? Uh, anyone want to take this? Uh, 
maybe David or um, yeah. yeah. I'm willing to give an answer to that. Um, well, cloud has a lot of advantages that you can leverage on, not just uh, as a, a data center sitting there, but all the capabilities that are sitting on top of it, which is which are becoming richer by the day. Now, for us, it's an ongoing reflection on wh wh what direction we should go. Uh, we are now in a hybrid cloud mode because as a port authority, we are responsible for keeping the port operational 24-7, 365 days a year. And the cloud is not the issue, but it's the, the road into the cloud called the internet that's sometimes the issue. Certainly, and the maritime industry was on severe uh, cyber attacks during summer, which impacted a lot of the carriers and IMO and so on. So at the end of the day, it's a reflection on what kind of platform systems, uh, applications, whatever data sources, you need to have very close at hand in case something goes wrong. So it's a question of business continuity, cyber resilience, and by which I'm not saying that cloud doesn't provide it, it provides a lot, but there are vulnerabilities as well. Yeah? Uh, so you have to think through very carefully if something goes down and it's no longer accessible, how much impact will you have in what kind of a time frame, and what is the likelihood of that thing to happen? And based on that, you have to take a decision because it's not a black and white thing. That's why hybrid cloud is there as a beginning because in the beginning, when the cloud discussion started, it was all about public cloud, public cloud, public cloud versus on-prem. Now we're sitting in the middle, which is the balanced kind of thing, the hybrid stuff. And of course, technology with Kubernetes and software containers and so on, now provide you with the means to swap loads from left to right based upon your needs. So it's also a question of evolution, temporary needs, et cetera, et cetera. But we also stick to local data centers and our own fiber backbone because of that uh, business critical nature of the 24 seven, uh, 365 operation needs we have. Thank you, Irvin. Thank you for that perspective. I think that uh, that was the last question I could squeeze. So I'll just go on with the closing remarks here. Yeah. Um, so welcome again, everybody. We are happy to partner with next time Port of Antwerp and WTC Wenlo Holland in discussing integrating supply chain and technology in today's session. They have been a good partner of ours. Special thank you to the distinguished panelists and companies that presented today and the audience that participated today. Uh, real quick on the World Trade Center, we are a total of 330 World Trade Centers in 100 countries with a mission of enabling train. Some parting thoughts, we're seeing an increase in, increase in activity post-pandemic of international companies taking a keen interest in India slash Asia be it in distribution, JV, or cooperation and technology. You're also seeing an increase in activity between EU and Asia. Um, we are seeing a break in supply chain globally, especially post-pandemic. This allows for new and innovative opportunities. There's also a digital acceleration, as we just spoke, not only on the enterprise level, but also on a society level, and supply chain is no exception. Technologies like RPA, IoT, 5G, blockchain, digital payments, cloud platforms, and AI are useful in enabling and boosting supply chain and trade. Digitization will further promote open and fair trade systems and platforms. I hope today's discussion gave an overview with some examples on how technology is being, being integrated with supply chain. We look forward to more sessions in this area, and thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, thank, thank, you, you thank you, everybody. Cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you, And on the behalf of next time, uh, I would like to thank our distinguished panelists and my co-moderator, Neeraj, for sharing their valuable experiences and for the participants for uh, participating in the session to make it a success. Uh, all the participants are welcome to connect with us with any topic that they found was interesting uh, in this discussion. Thank you once again, and thank you for joining. Stay, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Bye.